All right, CNT 120, last part of the chapter here on Chapter 3, they're going to talk about some different things we can use for troubleshooting address problems. One of the first things we can do is look at our Windows Event Viewer. Our Event Viewer, if I have issues, usually gives me some kind of clue if there's like an IP conflict or something like that. Always a good idea to come in here and start looking at various aspects, various logs to see if any, you know, IP conflict or anything like that is an issue in my network. Always a good place to start especially if we're dealing with nodes or servers or something like that. Um, ping. Ping is a way to check for connectivity between two nodes. Ping actually sends a little data packet out to that device. That If that device is on, it's configured, and it's working, it should respond back to you um, with a packet saying, yep, I'm here. And that's all part of the ICMP protocol, Internet Control Message Protocol. And it really is... Uh, a way to check to see if if your device is uh, set up, configured correctly with an IP address, TCP IP is running, and I have full connectivity between the two nodes. And the, the book shows you a chart of a whole bunch of different options for ping. Absolutely. All handy. Well, let's start with a simple ping for IP version 4. We'll just start with a simple ping, and I'm going to pull up my command prompt, and I'll do a ping of something simple like... Uh, I'll ping like google.com or something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a capture real quick. And I'm going to open my command prompt here and I'll do a ping. I should do a ping of www.hack.edu. Okay. Now, hack IDU might not be responding because of uh, firewall settings, which is fine. I'll cancel that and I'll do google.com. I'll try that one as well. There we go. Google should be responding. There we go. That looks good. So the firewall is blocking hack.edu. Might be the firewall on the web server going, now go away. And then Google's like, yeah, go ahead. So I'm going to stop, and there shows you I didn't get connectivity to hack.edu, but I did get connectivity to google.com. Now I'm going to stop my Wireshark up here, and I'm actually going to search for ICMP. And ICMP up here, the first couple says no response found. That was hack. And then down here, I got responses from Google.com. And what I see is, I see an ICMP request going out and a reply coming back. And you see that's all part of ICMP. And here's my ping request, followed by a ping response, re reply. And that's all part of ICMP. That's what ping is doing for me. It's a little data packet out, a little data packet back, showing connectivity. Always a good idea to try something like this, see, see if you do have connection or if it's some other issue. Utility I can use is IP config. We've been using that a bunch already. There is all kinds of applications to this. IP config, uh, I can show my current IP address. I can also release a dynamic IP and renew a dynamic IP. So if I come in here, I can do IP config like I've done multiple times and see what is my current IP address. There it is. If I do an IP config slash all, I can also see the MAC address. And I can even see, here's my MAC address, I can even see when this lease was obtained and when it expires. It was obtained at 8 o'clock this morning. Well, if I'm having an issue, I can also do a release of this IP. It'll release it. I no longer have it. And then I can turn around and do a renew. And once I talk to the DHCP server, it'll give me another one back or renew my lease. And what I actually see this time, the address I don't think changed. I didn't compare up there. But if I do an IP config all, I will see, I'll scroll up here a little bit, find my Ethernet 3 again. I'll see that this was obtained at 2.30 in the afternoon, and it's good until 2.30 on Thursday afternoon. I just renewed that lease, and it's good for a couple more days. That's what your release renew does. Well, if I have an IP address problem, I might be able to release, release a faulty IP and renew and get a usable IP. Very handy to do, very handy to do. And that's what they're showing you here with all the IP config commands. For that matter, also IF config. So I'll go to my Linux machine over here. Hopefully I typed that right. I typed a little kind of quickly there, so let's try it again. Yeah, 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 okay. All right. Get back here. So I'll do, I'll plug my password in again. There we go. I was typing too quickly the first time. On well, this guy, if I do an IF config, it shows me I'm IP. Okay. I can do an IF config down. Uh, oops. I have to actually plug in. I think over here, if you take a peek, if you take a peek, I need to actually 
indicate what interface I'm going to do down. So let me come back here and I'll do my, oops, <laughs> forget the right command prompt. Here we go. I will come over here and I will do my sudo ifconfig. If I can type ens33 down and I will plug in my password and that should shut that interface off and now I don't have it running and I should be able to turn right around and turn that back on and that'll bring actually there's the disconnected it shows you it's disconnected now it's reconnected because I did the up that would be a way to do the same kind of thing on Linux I just shut the interface off I turned it back on it would renew the IP if I had a problem with it so if I come in now I don't really see any change I don't think any change occurred from earlier to now yeah, it's still 115 but it would actually renew the lease on this guy if I had the same kind of problem on my Linux box it would do the same kind of thing over there too and there's your IP config. I have config on both of those. Extremely handy. Uh, I can use NSLOOKUP to look up from a DNS server what it knows about a particular domain name. So I can do an NSLOOKUP on a Google.com kind of deal or a uh, hack.edu kind of thing. I can do that on my Windows prompt. I can do an NSLOOKUP. I can do NSLOOKUP on something like Google.com and see what it knows. There it is. It pulled up a response. Here is what it is. Here's the IP for it, etc. And I can do the same thing on a Linux machine, but on this one I, I usually use dig. I use the same, it's kind of the same idea, but I'll do dig google.com and it pulls up a little bit more information for me, a little bit more thorough than my um, uh, Windows over there on the NS lookup. And actually I'm going to try this one right here to see if it pulls up there you go I even pull up a little bit more information because I specified www the actual web address of and now I'm getting a little bit more thorough response than I had before all very handy to see if there's any particular issues and there's dig I showed you here any particular issues with domain names or domain name resolution all useful tools for finding IP addressing or domain name problems on our network and there's the rest of chapter three